This tutorial is an introduction to organic chemistry and hydrocarbons. So organic versus inorganic. Inorganic chemistry, inorganic compounds come from the earth, whereas organic compounds come from living organisms. Inorganic are chemically durable, while organic are fairly fragile. Inorganic has been able to be synthesized for a very long time. It's been successfully synthesized by the 19th century, whereas there is, it took a much longer time for organic chemicals to be synthesized. In fact, they thought it was a vital force that it was just impossible to do until suddenly they were able to create urea in a lab. Of the millions of known compounds in our world, 95% of have the same element in common, carbon. It's the smallest member and only non-metal member of group four. It forms four covalent bonds and it can form single, double, and triple bonds. It bonds to itself in long straight chains, branch chains, or cyclical compounds. It has, it's a very diverse atom. It has the ability to form long chains referred to catenation. Saturated carbon is a carbon with four attachments. In other words, four things coming off of it. Alkanes are saturated. They contain a maximum number of hydrogen atoms per carbon. Unsaturated carbon is a carbon atom with less than four attachments. So in other words, there's a double bond here somewhere. Alkanes and alkynes are unsaturated. They contain at least one double or triple bond, respectively. They have fewer hydrogen atoms per carbon atom than alkanes. Organic compounds tend to be molecular and covalently bonded. They are mainly composed of just six nonmetallic elements, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, and phosphorus are found in all three states, solid, liquid, and gas. Solids tend to have a lower melting point in comparison to non, um, inorganic compounds, nonmetals, in comparison to metals. Solubility in water varies depending on which of the other elements are attached to the carbon and how, they, and how many there are. For instance, CH3OH is soluble in water whereas C10, H21, when we have more carbons there, is insoluble. Chemically and physically properties, chemical and physical properties of organic compounds are influenced by the bonding, whether it's single, double, or triple, the structure, whether it's straight, branch, cyclic, or aromatic, and the functional groups attached to it. Carbon-hydrogen bonds are mostly nonpolar. That's really, really important. You want to remember that. Methane's tetrahedral geometry makes it a nonpolar molecule. All other hydrocarbons are also nonpolar. Notice hydrocarbon. That specifically contains hydrogen and carbon atoms. Nonpolar substances are unable to mix with polar substances, including water which means if it's a nonpolar compound, it will not mix with water. So hydrocarbons, if it, unless there's a functional group that's allowing it to have some electronegativity there, will not mix with water. Hydrocarbons, hydrocarbon compounds participate in dispersion intermolecular forces. So in other words, once you get them close enough, they'll interact. So there's two categories of organic compounds. The first one is hydrocarbons. They contain only carbon and hydrogen. They have subcategories of aliphatic and aromatic. They're insoluble in water because they're nonpolar. They have no polar bonds to attract the water molecules. Aliphatic hydrocarbons are saturated or unsaturated. Saturated hydrocarbons are called alkanes, and all the carbon-carbon bonds are single. Unsaturated hydrocarbons contain multiple bonds between the carbons. Alkenes are hydrocarbons with double bonds, while alkynes are double bond are hydrocarbons with triple bonds. 
and they may be chains or rings. Chains may be straight or branched, meaning that you have a bunch of carbons in a line, and then you have other carbons coming off of it. Aromatic hydrocarbons contain a benzene ring. It's a six-member carbon ring structure. So you draw it as a hexagon. And then there's a double bond in between them. Group two is functionalized hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons that contain additional atoms or groups of atoms. Hydrogen atoms are replaced by halogens, a single atom, or a group of atoms such as OH, hydroxide, and the hydroxyl group. Both categories can be further divided into subfamilies. So here's organic compounds. We have hydrocarbons on one side and functionalized hydrocarbons on another side. Hydrocarbons are only hydrogen and carbon. That's important. And they're also nonpolar. We have alkanes with single, alkanes with double, alkynes with triple bonds, and then we have aromatic with a benzene ring. There are different ways to depict these, co these compounds. Molecular formulas are ones that we've been using so far throughout the entire semester. They indicate the number and type of atoms in the molecule, but don't show how the atoms are attached to one another. A structural formula is a two-dimensional representation of the, of the molecule. It shows the atoms in the, in the molecule and how they're arranged. It gives an indication of the molecular's, molecule's geometric shape, shows the relative positions of the atoms in the molecule. Structural formulas are organic compounds for organic compounds are similar to Lewis structures, but dashes represent bonding electron pairs. And then condensed for structural formulas are compactly written structural formulas. Here's a visual of this. So a structural formula is one where you show every single bond and you see what's going to what. Be, um, condensed formula is when it's written out without the lines going to it. Skeletal structure is probably what you'll see most often in organic chemistry where you see that there's a line at the end of each line and at the bend is a carbon. So there's one, two, three carbons here and then we have an OH group at the end. And this is actually propanol. And then we have ball stick, which it's just a picture of it, it's a model. And then space filling is right here. All right, so Let's practice drawing some of these. C7H16. Well, let's draw the structural formula first. So that means we're going to have seven carbons in a row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. H16. Remember, each carbon needs four lines coming off of it. It has four bonds. So there's three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And at the each end of these is going to be a hydrogen. All right, now to convert this over to the skeletal structure, remember the end and bend is each carbon. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's my seven carbons. I don't have to draw on the hydrogen with the skeleton structure because it's assumed that each carbon has four lines coming off of it. So if you don't see a line there, it's assumed that it's replaced with hydrogens. So if you notice here, you, there's two lines coming off of this carbon here.
That means that I have two more lines coming off of it with hydrogen that are invisible. Here, that carbon at the end, I only have one line coming off of it. That means I have three invisible hydrogens because each carbon has four lines coming off of it. And that's your introduction to organic chemistry and hydrocarbons.